Hello students, uh, welcome to your geometry review video. In this video, we're going to look over uh, very, very briefly um, all of the concepts that we've covered so far in geometry class, okay? Um, I'm gonna show you some examples, um, or at least introduce, reintroduce you to some examples from each of these sections, um, and hopefully this will sort of uh, refresh your memory on some things and, and, and bring back some things that we did maybe a long time ago. Um, and then, uh, you know, we'll use this information then to prepare uh, for our little final quiz tomorrow. So um, we're gonna start way back in chapter one and work our way up through chapter eight. We did skip chapters five, uh, we skipped chapter five, I think, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll just start with, with chapter one, the basics of geometry. Okay. The, the basic things that we started out with, um, was a lot of vocabulary, right? We started out talking mainly about vocabulary, trying to define things like defining points as, you know, sp spots in space that we named with a capital letter. Um, we talked about lines, right? We talked about rays, we talked about line segments and the differences between those uh, three things, right? Lines go forever in both directions. Rays have a starting point and go forever in one direction. Segments have two endpoints, don't go forever in either direction, right? So those things, and then we also talked about planes. And remember, those are like pieces of paper that we imagine get extended forever in all directions. Um, we also talked in this first chapter about angles. All right, so if we have right, some angle like that. Not sure what's going on with this thing now, but um, yeah, we talked about angles. We talked about obtuse angles or acute angles. Um, we talked about measuring angles. We talked about lengths of segments. Right, so um, we talked about finding the length of a segment, the distance. We talked about segment addition postulate, angle addition postulate. Um, other things that we talked about in this section uh, were vertical angles, right? We understand vertical angles. We talked about um, adjacent angles. We talked about supplementary angles. We talked about complementary angles. Uh, these are all terms that I hope we have some, some pretty good understanding of, or, or we at least can uh, look back and remember what it means for angles to be adjacent or to be supplementary or to be complementary, uh, et cetera. Right? So, um, yeah, we had these different vocabulary terms for different types of angles. Okay? Um, the next thing that we sort of went into and focused on um, I'm going to skip over all the stuff we did with conditional statements. That was chapter two, you know, if, then, converse, inverse, contrapositive, those kinds of things. Um, it's not more like, that's more like logical thinking as opposed to true geometry concepts. So the next geometry concept that we talked about um, was different types of angles besides these types of angles. We talked about uh, alternate interior angles. We talked about uh, same side interior angles. We talked about alternate exterior angles and so on and so on, right? So we, uh, we had pictures a lot of times that looked something like this. And uh, we had transversal lines, right? That were, uh, that were intersected, uh, two lines that were intersected by a transversal. And these different angles that were created, uh, they, you know, we did a lot like this, one, two, three, four, and so on. And we, we uh, discussed the relationships between these types of angles, right? Corresponding angles, alternate interior, as I said, alternate exterior, and so on. Uh, so that was chapter three. Um, and then the other part of chapter three was, uh, parallel and perpendicular lines. So we talked a lot about the slopes of parallel lines and perpendicular lines, you know, in the coordinate grid, 
Um, we, we had a lot of theorems in chapter three about um, parallel and perpendicular lines as well. And those theorems, they included like, uh, you know, when two lines are parallel to the same line, like the transverse, uh, what did we call that? Parallel transitive. That's what it was, transitive. See, I got to remember some of these words too. The parallel transitive property where you had two lines uh, that were parallel to the same line, you know, then all three of them have to be parallel. We talked about perpendicular to the same line. So if you have two lines that are both perpendicular, meaning meet at 90 degrees to the same line, those have to be parallel. So we talked about ways we can prove lines are parallel or perpendicular um, in that as well. And then an application of parallel lines that we didn't spend a lot of time in the transition, but um, from here, we, we then started talking about triangles. Okay, so uh, we talked about triangles starting with the angles inside of a triangle. So, you know, if we have uh, a triangle, we know that the three angles inside of a triangle together, they have to add up to 180 degrees, right? And that um, sort of actually was a, uh, an application of parallel lines. Like I said, we didn't do a lot with that, but um, the angles add to 180. Right. We also talked about uh, exterior angles of a triangle. Right. So we talked about exterior angles and then these being the remote interiors and how the exterior angles were really equal to the two remote interior angles added together. Um, right. So this angle four would be equal to two plus three in this picture. Um, and then we started talking about triangles being congruent to each other. Right. We talked about um, different ways we can prove triangles are congruent. We had all those shortcuts, right? You know, uh, angle, side, angle, side, 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 angle, side. We did not have angle, side, side, right? That's not a thing. Um, we did have hypotenuse leg, remember, for right triangles. Um, and so we, we proved that triangles were congruent to each other. We talked about what that means for the rest of the shape, right? When we have these shortcuts uh, and we know that the triangles are congruent, that then can lead us to CPCTC, and we did a lot of this in the context of proofs, right? This, this was sort of our area of proofs when we were proving that this triangle is congruent to this one, or we were proving that this angle was congruent to that angle, and so on and so on. Okay, so um, <clears throat> also in this, we talked a lot about isosceles triangles, right? We had a whole section on isosceles triangles where two legs are the same length or to the sides of the same length. And remember that that means the angles across from them are also the same length, right? So for isosceles triangles, we have congruent sides mean congruent angles, isosceles, okay? And then when we have an equilateral, an equilateral triangle, we not only know that two angles and two sides are equal, but that all three are equal. And in fact, all three of these angles then measure 60 degrees, right? Each one of these measures 60 degrees. So that was equilateral. We talked uh, about those and how they were related to each other. And we did a lot of algebra with those, right? Solving for X and things of that nature. Um, we did a whole section on overlapping triangles, but that was just more complicated pictures where we use these same thing, okay? Um, and then when we started our virtual learning stuff, we, we sort of moved on to quadrilaterals, right? We started talking about four-sided shapes instead of three-sided shapes. We started talking about, um, well, first we, we first talked about polygons in general. Um, we talked about angles in a polygon, the interior angles, right? Remember had this formula N minus two times 180 degrees because we divided the shapes into triangles to find the sum of their angles. Um, and then we also were uh, looking at exterior angles. Remember, exterior angles of a polygon always add up to 360 all the time, no matter what. Um, so that was the start of chapter six. And then the rest of chapter six was about quadrilaterals. We talked about parallelograms. We talked about, um, you know, from there, we got more specific with rectangles, rhombuses, squares. 
we talked a lot about their properties, right? And how we could then use um, the properties to prove that certain things were these types of shapes uh, and so on. We talked a lot about their diagonals, right? Being congruent or perpendicular or angles being congruent or sides, opposite sides being congruent or parallel and so on. Um, we also talked about trapezoids, right? So trapezoids were the ones with one pair of parallel sides. And then we got more specific there with isosceles trapezoids. And that meant, uh, you know, that these two legs were congruent. That made an isosceles trapezoid, which gave us some more um, properties about these angles being congruent, diagonals being congruent, and so on. Um, and then we talked about kites as well. One thing that um, we didn't do a great job of is, is recognizing that a kite is only a kite if it's not a parallelogram, right? Kites have actually no parallel sides at all. So if you have something that you think is a kite, but it has all these parallel sides, it's probably actually a rhombus and it can't be a rhombus and a kite at the same time. That was um, a common mistake when we did our chapter six test. Um, we, we also, to, to end that chapter, we got four coordinate points um, and we had to, decide kind of what shape each coordinate point was, right? So if we, we have four corners and we plot them on a graph and we see, are they congruent sides? Are they parallel sides and so on? Um, so that was sort of our most complicated application, I think, of, of this chapter. Um, so that was chapter six, all about quadrilaterals in, uh, the next thing that we did, which I don't actually have on here, before we did right triangles in chapter eight, we actually did similar triangles in chapter seven. And that was where we were um, dealing mainly with proportions, right? Ratios and proportions and things like that. Um, so similar triangles, we, we dealt a lot with, um, as I said, ratios and proportions. So we had, you know, X over three was equal to four over, uh, you know, five, right? We solved that for X. And then we looked at similar triangles or similar shapes in general where one was bigger than the other, but they were um, equal sort of in, in shape, right? So we had the same shape, but one was bigger than the other. We talked about the angle-angle method of, of, of showing things are similar or proving things are similar. Um, we had the side angle side where we had to get some ratios, right? Remember side lengths for similar polygons and specifically triangles had to be in the same ratios. And then side, side, side similarity um, was also uh, a shortcut. And then once we had these things, then we used the side lengths we knew to set up proportions and find missing side lengths, to find more information about those uh, triangles, right? Um, and, then, and then the end of that chapter, chapter seven, was uh, we were dealing with, you know, when we have something like this, where we have a line that's parallel, to one side of a triangle, it cuts um, the other two sides into these ratios that make proportions, right? X over Y would have to be equal to A over B. So we had these proportions in triangles, that's lesson seven, five. Um, this is all on Google Classroom as is chapter six, right? And then we just finished up, we just ended with four sections of chapter eight, which was specifically about right triangles and more specifically trigonometry. Right, so we started with the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. We talked about special right triangles with our 45, 45, 90s or our 30, 60, 90s. And then we started talking about trigonometry. Whoops, not trip, trig. Trigonometry. Okay, and then uh, angles of elevation and depression, right? That was the last section. Just an application of trigonometry. So um, as I mentioned, chapters six, seven, and eight are all on Google Classroom still. Um, chapters you know, one through four is what we covered um, before we, we went digital. So um, you may have to look back on some, some notes or things that you might have. Um, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, I encourage you to send me a quick email um, hopefully this, this refreshes some of your memory. If there are things here that you're thinking like, yeah, I never really got that in the first place and you would like to know more, that's what I'm here for, okay? All of this stuff is fair game for our, our, for our final quiz. Um, but remember that the, 
the final quiz uh, is only going to be counted if it helps your grade. So um, it is an opportunity to boost your grade. You do all have to take it. If you skip it, you'll get a zero. As long as you take it, um, it will only count if, if, if it improves your grade. But um, as I mentioned, we sort of go chapter eight, chapter seven, chapter six, chapter four, chapter three, chapters two and one. Okay, back to this stuff. So um, if you have any questions, as I said, please reach out to me, let me know um, if there's anything that I need to re-explain or uh, that you want clarified before you take your final quiz, let me know. Otherwise, that's all I have for you right now, and we will talk to you soon.